Hello class, we're now going to do section 5.5, which is about systems of inequalities. And we do both linear and nonlinear systems of inequalities. Um, do 1 and 2 on your own. We did them in class together. But 1 and 2 are systems of nonlinear inequalities. I'm sorry, let me say that again. 1 and 2 are systems of linear inequalities in two, uh, two unknowns. And uh, this is review. You learned how to do this in elementary algebra, and we did it in class, so I'm not going to take the time to do it on the video. I'm going to start right in with number three. And remember, the trick to these systems of inequalities is that the solution set is actually a region on the graph. Okay, So we're looking for a region on the graph where all the points in that region will be solutions to the system which means they make both of these inequalities true. A solution is something that makes the inequality or the equation true. That's what a solution is. All right, so for graphing, let's look at number three. The first inequality is y is greater than x squared. So remember, your first job is to graph what I call the boundary graph. And the boundary graph for that one is you take out the inequality, you put in an equal sign, y equals x squared. Hey, we can graph that. That's just a problem. But before, so I'm going to plot a few points. So 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4. Before I connect my dots, I look back at the original inequality, and it just has a greater than. So I know that this should be a nice dashed line like this. Dashed graph. That means the points on the curve are not actually included. Okay, now we're going to shade, and I got out my highlighters. Okay, and um, the parabola, the dotted line here, breaks this graph up into two regions, what I call inside the parabola and outside of the parabola. So one of those two is going to get shaded, because one of those two is where uh, you have points that make this inequality true. And the way you figure that out is by testing. So I'm going to pick the point up here, 0, 10. If x is 0 and y is 10, will that be a true statement? Uh, yeah, it will. So that means this one I'm shading inside of my parabola. So I use green, and it's inside there. Okay. Now, to do the second part, I ignore what I have done. I pretend like I cannot see that green stuff there. And I graph the second one. The boundary for the second graph would be 2x plus 4y equals 8. That's a line. To graph this line, I'm going to use the intercepts. If x is 0, it turns out that y is 2. If y is 0, it turns out x is 4. Okay, so let's plot them. If x is 0, y is 2. If x is 4, y is 0. Now, before I connect those, that should be a solid line. Okay, solid solid, like that. And now I need to decide which part I'm shading. Okay, so once again, pick a test point. I'm going to pick the point 0, 0 because it's not on the boundary. And if I put 0, 0 into this original inequality, 0 plus 0 is 0, which is less than 8. True. Okay, so for the line, Everything below the line would make that inequality too. Now what we want, oops, that's smeared, I apologize, is we want where the green and the yellow overlap. This is more fun if you have yellow and blue because then they make green. But I didn't have a blue highlighter. So let's fill in this part right here in purple. So that purple region would be the part, the region that makes both of those inequalities true. Okay, that's not bad, right? Okay. So you're going to do the same thing for the rest of these. Remember, this is where you get a lot of practice graphing. So number four, I'm just going to tell you, the first inequality is a circle. The second inequality is a line. Once again, we, we did that in class, so I want you to try it again on your own. Um, and I'm actually going to skip all the way over to number 7, because I have faith that you guys can do these without me. They're just graphing and shading. This is actually fun stuff. Okay, so let's do 7 together. 
Let's look at the first inequality on number 7. Okay, um, so look at that. Imagine an equal sign instead of a greater than sign, and I say, aha, that is a circle that's centered at 1, negative 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and has a radius of 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And now when I make my circle, since this is just a greater than, it's going to be dot, a dashed graph, dash, 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 dash. Ooh, not bad. Okay. Now, it turns out that since this is greater than, if I pick some test points, uh, I am going to see that I should shade outside of this circle. Okay, I'm not going to actually shade that because my graph will get messy again. But just remember, it. I'm supposed to shade outside of this circle. Now let's look at the second inequality. Once again, imagine an equal sign instead of a less than sign. Once again, this is a circle that's centered at the same place, 1, negative 4. But this time, the radius is 6. Okay, so 3, so if that's the center, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Again, we make this dashed. This is not that fabulous, but you guys get the idea. It's supposed to be dashed. And now, since this is a less than, if you pick a test point, it turns out you're supposed to shade inside of the larger circle. So if I'm supposed to shade inside the larger circle but outside the smaller circle, then the region... I'm going to use green here, is this donut shape right here, otherwise known as a washer. If you go on a calculus, we call these washers. Uh, I'm going to call it a donut because it sounds yummier. Okay, and there it is. So you see, these are easy. Expect to see these on the test because you get, you have to graph and you have to do your shading. So there's a lot of things I can test at once. Um, the rest of the problems uh, we'll talk about together in class. Um, they are uh, application problems or word problems, and so we'll do those in class.